Hello, everyone, and welcome to Late Night Love. I'm Dr. Caroline Heim, and this is Dr. Christian Heim on piano. Welcome to our pod show for preventative mental health. And tonight's topic is... Why do dogs love humans? And why do we love them? <laughs> it's going to be a rough got, time it's, it's tonight. Gonna, <laughs> it's going to be rough. <laughs> this is going to be hard to get through because <laughs> I know that there are going to be a few jokes coming from Mr. Heim here. <laughs> Dr. Heim's in his element. He's a dog lover. In fact, he's a dog. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't actually say you're a dog, but you you love dogs and piano. Um, they're two of your greatest loves, right? They are. They are. They are not necessarily okay. that awesome. Yes, okay. <laughs> Welcome to old friends and new to our pod show for preventative mental health. We're so glad you could join us. Old faithful friends. <laughs> I'm not going to get through this. Um, so, so glad you could join us. If you have any comments, if you have any things to say about dogs, we would love to hear what kind of dog you have. Tell us your dog stories, write them in the chat. Um, and if you're watching afterwards, tell us about your dog and that special um, dog love story that you have. Um, we love to hear those. We really love to hear them and how they are so faithful and all of that. We'll be discussing that. We'll be discussing why dogs love humans, why we love them. We'll be going and um, having a few stories here. It's going to be fun. And we always have music in the end. So stick around for that. Actually, we've got a song story thing. Yeah? We've got a song story. Yeah. I've decided not to do any Bach today <laughs> oh, because my Bach is worse than my bite. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. It's starting. <laughs> what am I going to do? If you don't Help like me out my here. jokes, okay, just, just bark out your complaints, okay? <laughs> okay, okay, really okay. Okay, care. let's get into the questions, okay? All right, all right, okay. right. here okay. we go. Before we do this, yeah, okay. I do need to explain why we're talking about dogs. Yes. All right. Uh, in our quest to become more loving humans, to understand love and to love each other and the context of our love so much more, there's a lot that we can learn about our relationship with dogs. Yes. Uh, what to do and what not to do. Okay. And why we love dogs so much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. Good. Okay. All right. All right. So I'll, I'll settle down now. <laughs> Promise. First question okay. is why do dogs and humans love each other? Let's just jump into it. <sighs> She's been hounding me with this question all week long. Okay. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. So uh, there's a few reasons, and yes. uh, there's there's a few things to sort of. Uh, just separate. Okay, so first of all, why dogs and humans? Yeah. Uh, the first question is, why do we love hum uh, dogs and why do dogs love us? See, I'm already thinking that I'm a dog, all right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, firstly, it's because we both have limbic systems. Yeah. So we are both feelings-based creatures. Yeah. Secondly, uh, like dogs, we are social creatures. So true. We work together, we cooperate to mm -hmm. survive. Mm -hmm. Now, Part of the thing is that we're losing some of that, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. uh, in our affluence and in mm -hmm. our prosperity. But dogs show us how important it is to keep up that 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 socialising. And yeah. and I suppose from an evolutionary point of view, all right, yeah. dogs have been useful to us, and we have been useful for dogs, yeah. right. Yeah. So so that's reasons why we both sort of came together. But there are specific reasons why we as humans really love our dogs. Mm -hmm. And again, it's got to do with the limbic system because yeah. the limbic system is full of feelings. And so uh, dogs are trusting and trustworthy. So yes. uh, we can uh, say things to dogs and because they can't talk, they're not going to betray our secrets. Oh, yes. And you can cry in front of a dog. Yes, because yeah. <laughs> dogs actually read our expressions very, very well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah in fact, their, uh, their whole face is capable more of... Uh, human expressions yeah. than almost any other species. And they've evolved that way. They've actually evolved muscles to have facial expressions that are like us. So dogs are actually really good at expressing their own emotions and yeah. they like that. It's uncomplicated. But the other thing is dogs are really good at reading us. Mm. Dogs mm -hmm. will actually look at you and go, you're not in a great mood today, are yeah. you? Yeah. Is there anything I can do to help? So is that them reading our facial expressions or is it reading or, or just sensing our emotions? Or is it a bit of both? Okay, it's, it's, it's actually both. Okay. So uh, science, as you know, tends to be very comfortable with what's concrete and what yeah. we can actually see, but less comfortable with things that are abstract. Yeah. So our facial expressions is 
Uh, they're very concrete. Mm -hmm. You can see facial expressions, and as Darwin showed, uh, facial expressions uh, express emotions, and it's universal. You can look at a person's face and know what anger mm -hmm. is. You mm -hmm. can look at a wolf's face and mm -hmm. know what anger mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. You can know at a person's face and know when they're feeling sad. Mm -hmm. Well, dogs can read all of that. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, but it's also, when you look into a dog's eyes, mm -hmm. it's like, Okay, so we've got this word, the social brain. Whenever I look into your eyes, mm. my social brain is connected to your social brain. Yes. So we actually start feeling together. Yes. Yes, this has to do with the angular singular gyrus and yes. the limbic system, <laughs> all right? But we're connected. Yeah. When you look into a dog's eyes, mm. the same sort of connection is there. Mm. And the thing is that for dogs, it's actually a more important connection because they don't understand our words. Mm, mm, you know, mm, if you mm. say, Fido, I want you to fetch my slippers and get the newspaper and uh, keep that cat away, uh, the most that the dog will understand is Fido. <laughs> okay, I think I know what this guy wants, yeah, okay? And, yeah. uh, but the dog will not just listen to the words, it'll listen to the intonation okay. behind the words yeah. and derive all of their a meaning through that. Yeah, yeah. And that's actually another lesson because that's actually how we communicate as well. Mm. But because we can talk, we think that people are meaning what they say and say what they mean. Mm. Okay. But mm. when you look at people's intonations and the emotions behind the mm. words, people actually can tell you something different to what their words saying. Yeah. Things so like true. things like I'm not angry. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, but the really wonderful thing about dogs, and this is perhaps something that we need to learn from them as humans, and there's so much we can learn from dogs, is that um, when we are feeling uh, really sad or, or down, their immediate response is something quite physical. They come up and lick your tears away yes. or, or something like that or, yes. or, 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 or wine with you or, or, or something like that, okay? They, they, they really empathise with you that way, whereas humans think, oh, well, I'll, I'll use my frontal lobe and I'll, I'll try and solve this for this person. Yeah. When all perhaps humans need is a hug. Yeah. 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 You can say something to that or? No. <laughs> Throw me a bone and I may. You know? <laughs> but what you're saying is exactly yeah. right. In fact, one of the mistakes that we make in love as humans is we think that if we've said something to somebody, yeah. that that has shown love. Yeah. Uh, well, you know that I love you. Mm. Right, or I'll be there. Yeah. You know I'm here to help. Mm. Words become so empty unless yeah. it's followed up by actual action, mm. all right? Mm. Uh, an actual hand on the shoulder yes. says I love you more than the words. Mm. Uh, mm. Or somebody saying, look, I'll actually give you a hand with that. It's the action of going over to the person and doing something with them yeah. that says, I'm actually here with you. Yeah. No, no, no matter what the words were, mm -hmm. all right, it's the action or it's the facial expressions, it's the uh, intonation in our voice that yeah. means so much more than the words. But because we are the only species that talk, we end up relying on the words so much. Mm -hmm. And as you know, we're always capable of lying as well. Yeah, I know. And dogs, dogs can't don't lie. lie. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> They, they, they can't. That's true. That's okay. Right, true. They can get those guilty looks on their faces, though, though can't they, when they've, they've done something wrong? So there's some understanding there going yes, on. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, because guilt is an emotion. Yeah, okay. It happens in the limbic system. Yeah. And uh, yes, you do see those, those guilty looks yeah. on the dog, but it's, it's not a lie. They actually no, will no, no, show no. you what they are feeling. Yeah. Whereas we humans calculate, if we're feeling down, mm. a lot of us will go, okay, well, I don't want people to know that I'm feeling yeah, down. Yeah, so we put on that false self, yeah. Yeah, we do. Mm, mm, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Dogs can't do that. <laughs> okay, so last year when my students went into lockdown, into isolation for about six months, and also just a few weeks ago, unfortunately, because we had another COVID scare in Queensland, same thing happened. And one of the things I used to do is to get them, when they're quite often by themselves, not with family or anything, for weeks and weeks at a time, is to get them, see if any of them had a pet, and they bring them online. And the faces, which were really down, just lit up yes. okay and we laughed and there was so much joy there so I guess um, my question is can can animals and dogs in particular release those happy brain chemicals in us is, oh yeah, look, we, yeah. we have 
<laughs> we, we, we have so much evidence to show that uh, animals do, but particularly dogs. Yeah. When you look inside a dog's eyes, mm. uh, your oxytocin levels mm. actually go up threefold. Okay, right. so there's a big release of oxytocin. And the cuteness of dogs mm -hmm. and other animals releases dopamine in us, yes. just like uh, a, a child would. Yeah. Okay, there's real pleasure in seeing the innocence of dogs, which is why your students, when uh, they share their pets with each other, they let go of their defenses a little mm, bit. They mm. go, oh, isn't that cute? Yeah. And they let their emotions come through a lot more because the mere presence of dogs and pets means we become a bit more like them. We actually set aside our ability to lie mm. and we will actually let people see what we're really feeling. Yeah. Yeah, so what are those brain chemicals that are released then? Okay, so... Happy so, brain chemicals. We've talked about them before, but it's good to... Okay, let, to let's see. go into the brain to okay, see what's yeah. happening with all of that because yeah. it's actually really, really interesting, mm -hmm. really, really complex, and we've only really started to articulate which part of the brains do this. Okay, so, so the brain chemicals, which is something that we talk about a lot, are the DOSE, the dose of brain chemicals, the dopamine, which mm -hmm. we get from the cuteness of animals, mm -hmm. particularly dogs and cats, yes. uh, the oxytocin, which we get so much when we interact with pets that are able to interact back with us, mm -hmm. and the number one is got to be dogs, i got to say. You yeah, know. yeah. Second one is actually horses, because uh, a horse is also able to uh, give facial expressions and expressions through the oh, eyes. Yeah, there's that communication going on. So yeah, yeah, it's, 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 a, yeah. It's, it's an amazing relationship. And, and yeah. also because horses are a bit the same in that we domesticated horses because they were useful to us, but we were useful to their survival yes. as well. So we've got a long history with horses. Yes. Anyway, I digress. So let me go get to the serotonin, which yes, is the S, yeah. that calm contentment of just having an old dog <laughs> sitting at your feet while yeah. you're doing some reading and yeah. the dog is just content to be with you. Yeah, so good. It's a wonderful, so wonderful good. feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good feeling for the dog too. <laughs> okay. There's that love shared. We want more of the love. There is. By the yeah. way, when you go back to some reading tonight, can I just lie at your feet? <laughs> <laughs> please, please, please. All right. Honestly. <laughs> but <clears throat> I do want to get into another part of the brain, a more complex part of the brain. Yes. Because uh, what happens is the brain, okay, we talk a lot about the limbic system feelings mm -hmm. and we talk about the frontal lobe thoughts. Mm. But before any of our limbic system impulses or uh, frontal lobe impulses leave the body to actually uh change the way we move or yeah. do something, they go through what's called the basal ganglia, all right? The basal ganglia. Basal ganglia just means the, the nerve cells that are at the bottom of the brain. Okay. okay, yeah. Now, their job is actually to refine every movement that we make. But that doesn't mean that they're just concerned with movement, mm. all right? So uh, let's say, um, okay, I had to go visit some, some friends mm. the other day, but Okay, uh, it had been a hard day, there had been certain things that had happened, I was feeling down, I had not had good sleep. Yeah. So they could tell just by looking at me, just by looking at my posture, oh, Christian's feeling down, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that all happens in the basal ganglia. Mm -hmm. The basal ganglia says, all right, uh, the body wants to move in this direction. Mm -hmm. uh, there are purposeful movements that I decide that I want to do. Mm -hmm. That goes through the basal ganglia. But then there are these impulses from the limbic system that says, but his mood is down at the moment. So we're going to put a down twist on all the movements that he makes. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My gosh. Yeah. So we know this much about the brain. We know this much about wow. the brain. This is, this is only this is recent so information. Okay, and yeah. uh, it's, it's been just articulated really well what the basal ganglia now do. Okay. But uh, it means that we are transmitting not only our thoughts, but mm. also our feelings through each of our movements, mm. right? Mm. So, mm. so I could just touch you and you go, are you okay? You yeah, seem a yeah. bit tense. Yeah, yeah. How does that happen? Yeah. Because your brain is so in tuned to the small signals mm. in any movement that I make. Mm. Or mm. another way of explaining it is um, playing music. My basal ganglia uh, transmits the movements that my fingers want to make yeah. because I have learned and practiced this very mechanically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But on top of that comes this layer of 
All right, Christian, what do you want to express through this, mm -hmm. right? So uh, the movement in the basal ganglia sort of say, okay, we want this to be um, mysterious and magical. Rather than noble and uptight. And the basal mm. ganglia does all of that. Wow. It does the refining of the thoughts, the movements, and the emotions mm. to mm. have a net result. Uh, now, obviously, it's very complex, yes. but it's something that you feel mm. as well as know the meaning of. Yeah. So, in dogs, yeah. all yes. right, when we train dogs, yeah. we're actually working with them at the basal ganglia level. Wow. All right. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that the actions that they do follow the commands that we give them, the mm -hmm. signals that we give them, mm -hmm. but also the limbic system connection that we give them. Mm. Right. Because how does a dog know that that signal means roll over, mm. right? There's there's associations, yes. but the dog has made a relationship with you, with your limbic system, mm. to know your intention with a signal. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we're actually working with it's, it's actually called the chordate nucleus, but it's okay. part of the basal ganglia, so that the dog's actions follow what we've taught them. Yes, to do, yes, right? I understand. But you are talking about a, a refinement of that action with a, using the limbic system and an emotion. Yes. So yes, so very well put. So clearly, you know, it, it's there's there's more behind it than, and it, it's a command. It's a commanding sort of a thing. Yes. So does that translate also when, uh, and so you are talking about limbic systems here and them sensing Always. things in us. Always. So um, fear. Okay, and, and, and when they can sense fear in us. Okay? Yes, I'm There's afraid that. you were going to bring that up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so same sort of a thing. They're sensing fear, and, um, and we know a lot of animals do sense fear too. So, All yeah. animals sense fear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah if, if fear is a very primordial uh, emotion mm. because, mm. well, it's got to do with our very survival. Mm. Uh, what do we fear? We fear when there's going to be harm to the body, then uh, when our life could be taken yeah. away. Well, dogs fear exactly the yeah. same thing. Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. So, yeah. and they 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 can read people so well. Yes. you know how they they'll go to one person and 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 not another. Yes. So, sensing whether that person actually likes them is it that the openness do you think or or what what what, what do you think it is for that one? Well, yes, they they can read limbic system cues that we give out. Yeah. In fact, Sigmund Freud. Yeah. Later in life, became a dog person. Oh, yeah. right. One of his regrets was that he didn't get into dogs earlier in his yes. life. But he had this dog, it was a, a, a Chinese breed called a Chow Chow, mm -hmm. which kind of looks like a Chihuahua wearing 16 fur coats, all right? <laughs> but uh, when he would see people that he was analysing, yeah. the dog came in as well. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, so the first pet therapy was happening in what year, roundabout? When was Freud? Oh, Freud, Freud was around the turn of the uh, 20th century. Wow, so okay. pet therapy started then, guys. <laughs> well, it wasn't just pet therapy, but he used the dog to analyse the person. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so oh, if the dog was a bit standoffish, um, Sigmund Freud would say, hmm, you've been very anxious this week. Oh, right? really? How or great. if the dog went straight up to the person yeah. and were patting. Oh, you seem to be very relaxed and integrated oh my today. Gosh. And if the dog wanted to go out, it'll be like, um, Yoffi doesn't like the things that you're saying at the moment. You're using too many defences. <laughs> and if Yoffi wanted to come back into the room, it was like, Yoffi's decided to give you a second chance. Oh my gosh. Why don't you use dogs in your, in your practice then? <laughs> That'd be great. You love them so much. I, I, I do, but it, there ends up being a lot of focus on the dog. Yeah, of course. And, yeah. and, and actually, there are letters saying that a lot of people that went to Freud got quite annoyed at how much okay. focus the okay. dog okay. took. Okay. Right? I understand. Okay. Um, uh, the dog would also jump up onto the person that was being analysed, you know, <laughs> and Freud would go, oh, good, we've made a big discovery. Yoffi <laughs> is happy. Okay. <laughs> and apparently, Yoffi knew when 50 minutes was up. In oh. fact, it got to the stage where Freud did not keep time. Mm. If uh, Yoffi got up and yawned, mm. it was invariably 50 minutes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Okay. They're able to read. I want to pick up on something that you said a little bit earlier, and that is that um, dogs are, are very much like us. When yes. I was talking about my students. Um, 
Did, did I call your students dogs? No, you didn't. Oh, when okay, good, I was good. talking about my students, it showed their pets to the rest of okay, the, okay. the cohort. Okay. okay, so what I wanted to talk about was this, this um, strange phenomenon that happens when um, pets sort of kind of look a little bit like they're humans and <laughs> kind of have a similar personality to their humans. We, we go for a walk on the beach every afternoon, which is lovely, and we often see this gentleman um, a very tall, thin um, gentleman, very tall and thin, looks like he's walked out of a Russell Drysdale painting, which is, that's an Australian um, landscape artist, if you want to look that up. Very tall and thin. And he has always a, a greyhound with him who is also very tall and thin. Actually, both of them seem like they need a good meal. <laughs> I worry about them. And, and, and they don't say anything and they're just walking along, there, but they look alike. It's, yeah. it's amazing, okay? Yeah. And I'm sure you have stories of that and you, you see it also. But there's also personality difference in dogs too, yes. isn't there? Like, yes. Yeah, yeah. Now let me, let me finish with it because I wanted to talk about our dog. Christian, you always want to come in there. Okay. Um, our Sit. dog. Stay. Stay, stay, stay. Good. Um, our dog, um, called Zane, was a lovely cross Labrador uh, Staffordshire. And he, um, very, very friendly, super friendly, actually overly friendly, always in your face. And that's pretty much us. <laughs> literally, literally. <laughs> in your face all the time. Oh, goody, I want to play, I want to play, I want to do this, I want to do that. Over enthusiastic about everything. Again, yeah. very much like us. Um, and and hopefully our, our boys too, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so there is something with this. What, what are you thinking with, with it psychologically? I refer you to a study that was done in the 1950s yeah. that uh, resulted in a Bugs Bunny cartoon. Right. Right. Uh, basically, there's just wonderful Bugs Bunny cartoon where there are just all these owners with their dogs. And, uh, you know, there's this, this uptight woman with her poodle walking like this, yes. or this big burly guy, you know, yeah. with his bulldog going <laughs> yeah, around. Yeah. This. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's just true. And, and people, people will even tell me, you know, I'm a bit like a British bulldog. Once I've got an idea, I'm going to hang yeah, on to yeah, it. Yeah, there's right? all those analogies. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that reflects where uh, it's not so much a mutual relationship between yeah. uh, humans and dogs, but we choose dogs for our own purposes. Mm -hmm. And earlier in other episodes, I talked about how the brain likes to see itself uh, <laughs> it's true. Out, out in the community. No, you're going to transfer that to animals now. Well, well, how do we choose a dog? Well, it's, yes, of course, it's, it's certain. Yeah, we're attracted to certain breeds we're for certain reasons. attracted to certain breeds and certain personalities. Mm. And just as we attract, uh, let's say, a love partner or yeah. a friend mm -hmm. um, on things that are really intangible that we really yeah. don't understand. Okay, uh, so too uh, we can gravitate towards a new dog, mm. not only just a breed but that particular dog mm, that mm. says something about us and then the dog because dogs generally want to please mm, their owners mm. they grow to be more like the owner yeah. so if, if the owner is very friendly and very open the dog will go okay I'll be friendly and open yeah if the owner is a bit reserved yeah. uh, the dog even if it's an open friendly dog will go oh you know my my owner's just being a bit cautious here so yeah. I'll, I'll just be a bit more like that too mm, mm. and so you can see how dogs will grow to be like their primary owners yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's really interesting okay so we've talked about some of the things that you can learn from dogs with loyalty and unconditional love which is really loyalty. a big one yeah yeah okay yeah. let me talk about loyalty for a minute because there's a uh, a beautiful story about Hashiko the oh, Japanese dog yes, that waited yeah. nine years at the train station where uh, his owner, uh, a university professor, got off every day, mm. but the university professor had died at work. Mm. And so after waiting for years, and this dog waited for nine years, he mm. would go to the train station every day, the mm. whole town mm. knew him. This is in Tokyo, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, so why that amount of loyalty? Where does that loyalty yeah, come yeah, from? Yeah. Well. Dogs are descended from wolves, mm -hmm. and wolves are pack animals, and we usually say that in a uh, in a negative sense, you know, yes. because of the hunting aspect mm. of it. But uh, wolves are very cooperative; they mm. they help each other, and they are in tune to each other, mm. and uh, through that they survive well. Which yes. which is why they they sort of drew close to uh, humans because humans actually too are very loyal. Yeah 
creatures. Mm -hmm. Okay, we help each other survive by being loyal to each other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Any time we betray each other or cheat on mm -hmm. each other. Uh, we're actually going against our own survival needs, oh. okay? And, and the problem there is that we're spending so much time in hyper-individualism yes. and social media pursuits and our own pleasures that we're starting to forget about each other. Yeah. And that's one of the main messages that I want to bring back about our relationship with dogs, Yeah. okay? If, uh, if, if you're on the internet mm. and the dog doesn't get a look in, mm. all right, the mm. dog starts getting lonely, yeah. all right? Oh my goodness, it's true, yeah. Whereas yeah. if you pet the dog, if you feed the dog, if you take the dog for a walk, yeah. if you play with the dog, if you train the dog, it needs your full attention. Yes. Uh, yeah. You've got to be there. You can't have a device on at the stage or, or else the dog thinks that you're not there. Yeah. Because you're not. Mm. So, yeah. so that's one of the take home messages. Yeah, yeah. That if we were true to ourselves, true to our limbic system, true to what we actually want out of life, We'd actually spend more time with each other. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we would. Okay. And we can learn this from dogs. Um, yeah, so... So, so, so just, just to yeah, go ahead. Tie, yeah. tidy that up, uh, I, I gave an example of the loyalty that yeah. dogs have to humans, yeah. but that loyalty was what wolves had to each other. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. so it was always yeah. part of them. Yeah. And because we're the same in many ways, uh, we were very useful to dogs and dogs were very useful to us, and that's why the two species grew so close. Yeah, yeah, I made that connection with the loyalty and the wolves. Um, you also said, you know, you talked about you know, uh, the dog feeling lonely while you're on, on the internet. Yeah. Um, so that reminds me of COVID time, um, particularly yeah. 2020 um, in Australia, where we were more locked down in, in Australia during 2020. And um, yeah, there was just so many dogs on the beach. <laughs> Like there were just so many dogs around. They just seemed to multiply each week. I know. Where were the people? <laughs> it's just all these dogs on the beach. Who let came, the dogs out? Just came running towards us. <laughs> what? <laughs> digging holes. The whole beach was dug up. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's so funny watching the dogs dig up the sand. Okay, You see this mountain of sand being thrown. <laughs> no, they did actually have did owners with them. Oh. But they did seem... <laughs> You wanted to keep going with that story, didn't you? But they kept, they did seem to keep multiplying each week. And, yes. and also dogs and children, which was nice because finally the parents were at home and had more time with their children out on the beach. But, well, and the RSPCA was, you know, um, you know, uh, able to to find homes for jo dogs, which was great. And it was hard to find someone I know that, <coughs> that um, uh, has, is a dog trainer, you know, they would just, her, her, her dog had puppies actually while while it was COVID and the puppies just everyone wanted them straight away it was just you know yeah. very very quick yeah, yeah. so uh, it's it's hard to get a feel for just how much more popular dogs came before COVID yeah so you mentioned the RSPCA that's yeah. our Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals yes and they keep all these dogs and yeah. you, you go there and you sort of say I'll want that one good are yeah, you going to yeah, be a yeah. good home and take yeah, it home yeah. all right so they noted a 50% increase mm. in the amount of people. 50%? 50% increase in wow. the amount of dogs. Okay. Yeah. One study in the USA said uh, during COVID, 10% of the population bought dogs. Oh, that's huge. That is, that's huge. Oh my God. That's huge. Yeah. And uh, in the UK as well, yeah. uh, all these agencies sort of found that just the demand for dogs mm, just, went. Uh, just went up. And, and of course, if you wanted pedigree dogs, they became mm -hmm. a lot more expensive, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, we don't know to what extent, but the demand for dogs and dog ownership went up. Yes. Uh, which caused a few problems because uh, people aren't always ready for the responsibilities of dog ownership. True. All True. Right? Yeah. Because dogs do need to be trained. Yeah. And so I want to talk a little bit about training dogs. And, and then there was the problem, which as far as I know, hasn't quite eventuated, but a lot of abandonment of dogs yeah, yeah. because they're just too much work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, COVID became a time and, and we have the studies that show that just having a dog close is good to uh, prevent depression, mm -hmm. to prevent anxiety mm -hmm. as a stress relief, mm -hmm. as a relief for loneliness because mm -hmm. you are interacting with another living limbic system mm. that likes you mm, mm, and will become yeah. more like you. Yeah. It feels just wonderful just having a dog around. So rather than being 
lonely, mm. right? Having another living creature around to share that experience with you is such a wonderful feeling. And the nice thing about uh, one particular study showed that the more time uh, people spend with dogs, the more loving they are towards other people. Yeah. So that's th that's really nice. That means that people will actually express their love with dogs really and then take that into their relationships with people. Yeah, but then you do also see the people that seem to be able to show so much love and expression to a dog, but not with people. Well, all right. So, so now we get about uh, getting to the area as to why... Uh, why it's so easy to love a dog and why it's so hard to love a human. Okay. Because it is. It's it much is. harder to love a human. Yeah. Uh, there's a few reasons. First of all, a person-dog relationship is not a relationship of equals. Mm. Right? Mm. Uh, a dog's needs are actually quite small. Yeah. They, they just need to be safe. They need to be fed. They need to be exercised. Mm. And they need to be loved. Mm. All right? Uh, there are so many things that they don't demand from you. They never sort of say, you know what, I think we should move house. You know? <laughs> Why don't we go live somewhere else? Or, you know what, I'm sick and tired of this habit of yours. Yeah. All right? My dog's never said that to me. <laughs> All right. Thank goodness. Yeah, thank goodness. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, you, it's, it's rare that you'll go uh, have a dog sort of say, what? Biscuits again today? Yeah. I had this yesterday. Oh. What, what, what are we doing? Okay. Yeah. If a dog starts like that, mm. that's because of our training of the dog. Yeah, right? or just yeah, overindulging the dog well, or something well, like that. If we yeah, overindulge yeah. the dog, then yeah. the dog will get new habits. But yeah, the yeah. dog becomes a reflection of us, which leads me to training a dog, mm -hmm. all right? Because you can't just train a dog according to a set of instructions. Mm. If you carry out the instructions, the dog will not be trained. Mm. You need to enter into a relationship with the dog. Mm. You need to look the dog in the eyes. Mm. You need to use an authoritative voice sometimes. Mm. You need to use a, a nice, happy voice when the dog's done something right. Yes. And a punishing, gruff voice if the dog is not doing what you wanted to. And through these signals, the dog, through limbic system communication, will please you, mm. right? Mm. But if you say, please don't do that, dog. Please don't dig up the garden. <laughs> Could you stop that, please? The dog's not going to change no, its behavior whatsoever. So. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. same thing if you go, that was a very good thing to do, dog. You rolled <laughs> over very well, right? Yes. <laughs> you've got to go, good boy, well done, yeah. good girl. Aren't you a lovely dog? Or you've got to say, no. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that signal yeah, right, yeah, becomes yeah. a signal for dogs. Mm -hmm. And the dog goes, whoops, something's gone wrong here. Yeah. yeah. What have I done? What yeah, have I yeah, done? Yeah. And uh, OK, so all of that makes it easy to be in relationship with dogs because dogs will trust you mm. and they will obey you. Yeah. Yeah. Humans. OK. Uh, one, it takes a lot for a human being to trust you. We have yeah. to work so hard on trust. Mm. And mm. the second thing is because it's an equal relationship, a human is not there to obey you, mm. right? Mm. Small children yeah. need to because you are guiding them through life. Mm. You are actually training children. Yeah. Children don't uh, grow up knowing the right thing to do. You mm. actually need to train them. So there's a period of time when children will need to obey you. Yeah. But the older they get, the more equal the relationship becomes mm. and the more you have to trust and allow the other person their autonomy, mm. their ability to do things that just they want. Yeah. You see, the dog won't quite have that, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes the dog does want to obey you and you can watch a dog make a decision, you know, uh, but in the end, they will actually try to please you. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's underneath, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas another human being, a bit more complex. It is more complex. It's always that extra layer. But there is that, that, that time when, when the, the dog, as he's grown up, hasn't been with trustworthy owners and has, has and, and is a bit reticent, yeah. which is similar to us as we go through life that, you know, if we haven't, we've had bad experiences and we don't trust other yeah. human beings, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're le less likely to, um, yeah be loving and open towards yeah. anyone and be vulnerable in front of them. Yeah, yeah if, if dogs are abused, they will 
lose trust. They yeah. will they will curl into themselves. They will withdraw, mm. and then you've got to work really hard to bring trust to the dog again. Yeah. But the, the the lovely thing about the limbic system is it wants to trust. Mm. Yeah. Okay. If you start building up that relationship, um, it'll start to trust again because yeah. that's the nature of the limbic system. Yeah. The dogs are by nature social creatures. We yeah. are by nature social creatures, which which is why in an earlier ep episode I said that. The brain chemistry is on our side. Mm. We actually want to get on with people. Mm -hmm. We actually get upset when we don't get yeah. on with people, <laughs> yeah, right? So, so that's why we want to try to work some of this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good, good. Fantastic. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, yeah, so uh, obviously you work with veterans, okay, and... Um, you've had people with PTSD and they've had assistance dogs and things like that, so... Can you, that, that's just one example. I know you've already talked about yeah. dogs um, and, and depression and anxiety and all these different things. And I've had uh, students that have brought their dogs in actually performing <laughs> with, uh, with them on stage in, in little shows that they've put on and, and assessment items um, and, and responding. It was, it was some beautiful moments I've had with dogs on stage before. Mind you, they steal the show. Um, but you've actually had that experience with, yep. with veterans. So let's just use that as an example of how yep. how dogs help, help you know, PTSD and things like okay, that. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Pause for a minute. <laughs> okay, okay, end of the pause. Uh, <laughs> right, so uh, our very first animal that we domesticated as humans were dogs, mm. right? Uh, why? Because dogs were useful to us. Mm -mm. Dogs became guard dogs. Mm -hmm. Dogs were useful in hunting. Mm -hmm. Dogs were useful in surveillance. Yeah. Uh, dogs were useful to carry out deeds. Mm -hmm. So in a way, the latest thing that we found that dogs are useful for are assistance dogs, mm -hmm. right? And so the thing about PTSD in particular, okay, and we use assistance dogs for a, a number of different uh, diagnoses in uh, psychiatry, uh, is to keep emotions stable, yeah. right? And Assistant dogs are just amazing because they read their owners. Mm. They know what their owners are like. Mm -hmm. And I have seen that if an owner gets agitated, the dog will stand up and walk towards the owner and just put his head in his lap. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. the dog knows. Yeah. All right. And then the owner starts patting yeah. and starts feeling yeah. better. Yeah. It's wonderful. Mm. Okay. Or if uh, the dog senses that the owner is being threatened, mm. the dog will stand up and say, hey, hey are, you, are you missing with my owner here? Mm. Right. Okay. Mm, the protection. Yeah. Actually, and this is another thing that, that Freud said, dogs are uh, very honest. Okay. Mm. They will love their friends and they will bite their enemies. Ooh. Yeah. Right. So true. Whereas humans, tend to mix love and hate with every relationship they have, mm. all right? Mm. That's another thing that makes us really complex, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, we're just a seething mass of sometimes different emotions yeah. with every relationship. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so dogs aren't like that, and so the owners do get assisted, all yes, right? So, yes. uh, and it's uh, often with tasks as well as just keeping the emotions mm -hmm. uh, together. but. It takes a lot to make a, an assistance dog. Our, our dog, Zane, for example, he was a failed security he dog. He was. He was an ex-sniffer dog from the airport. And he just loved people too much. He, he stopped the sniffing and went up and licked people and, and loved them. So he was a reject. Yeah, yeah, he was a reject. But apparently two out of three become rejects. Oh, is it two out of three? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, it's really it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. Hopefully it's, it's gotten better since then. But we're encouraging people to use their own dogs as assistance dogs. Yeah. Okay, because they've already built up a relationship. And it's the relationship that's more important than the dog's abilities. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's really good. Okay, so we we're talking about different things that dogs teach us and loyalty and, and um, unconditional love. Um, and... Uh, well, yeah. not okay. No, right. no, no. You want to go... Just, just want to give you a little yeah. story about conditional, okay? Because okay. having assistance dogs creates a few problems, okay. right? Uh, when people with assistance dogs come into hospital, mm. one, that's fine. Two, that's fine. But when you start getting a hospital of, let's say, 30 beds... Oh, everyone's got their own dog. <laughs> with four dogs, right? <laughs> it, 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 you said unconditional yeah. love. But, you know, sometimes one assistance dog does not like the other assistance dog. <laughs> 
<laughs> right? Because they're stealing the scene. <laughs> and so I got to tell you that there are some psychiatric hospitals that uh, have complications because you know what? The dogs aren't getting on mm, as much. Okay, okay, very well. And nice. the other thing is we use uh, uh, dogs uh, for, let's say, people with dementia yeah. in, in nursing homes yeah, and yeah, things like yeah, that. Yeah. They are wonderful. Yeah. But you know what? It's actually a lot of work for the dog. Yes, yes. Right? So, so the dogs actually get exhausted. And yes. sometimes after they've been working for months, they need a few weeks off. Yeah, they don't yeah, want to have yeah. people just patting them all the time. They yeah. just need some time to themselves. So just as our limbic system gets fatigued, a dog's limbic system gets fatigued. So love fatigue or patting fatigue or what is it? Yeah, basically yeah. feeling fatigue. Feeling fatigue, yeah. Because yeah. everybody who wants to pat a dog it wants to take energy from them. I yes, want to feel it's better. Yeah, taking, isn't and, it? Yeah. And so if you get all this taking all day long, the dog sort of comes home going... <laughs> Yeah. What about me? So they're not limitless in that <laughs> no, way. No, they're not. Yeah, yeah, really interesting. Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, so loyalty, unconditional love, all sorts of different things. Um, but also they're protective yes. dogs, okay? Yes. So they protect you against hurt. And, I mean, yeah. because everyone gives... The, the, the guard dogs are a bad rap, obviously, because they don't want to get bitten by them and, and all of that kind yeah. of stuff. But they are... Th their innate response is because of protection, because wanting to protect you and protect the home and all of that. So, well, uh, yeah. when you went to guard dogs, yeah. uh, there were like two layers there. Okay. Uh, one layer was uh, every dog will become protective of their owners yeah. uh, to the point where they will protect babies and children. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. I'm part of this family. Nobody's yeah. going to touch this family unless you're um, uh, friendly. Mm -mm. All right. And, mm -mm. and we see that in dogs. Uh, so there's that layer. But a guard dog, mm. right? Let's say uh, dogs like Rottweilers or German Shepherds mm. that are guarding an actual premises. Mm -hmm. Well, you've given them a task, mm -hmm. right? You've given them a job to do. Okay, right, right. And the right. dog is intelligent enough to know this is my task. Job, job. Yeah, this yeah. is what oh, I've good, got to good. do. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. What? What? I'm here to guard this place, all right? <laughs> Who are you, friend or foe? <laughs> and, and, and as soon as you put your hand out like this and go, nice dog, they can sort of say, oh, Friendly chap here. Not okay. all the time, but anyway, yeah. No, yeah, but, but, yeah. Uh, but basically they will read who you are, Yeah. right? Yeah. Whereas if you come in with a crowbar, you know, with a mask on and, you know, sort of uh, trying to sneak in, yeah. you're giving off vibes that you're here to harm the yeah, place, yeah. all right? Yeah. So okay, and the yeah. dogs pick up on this. So that's the two different layers? They're the different layers, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. Well, I think we're almost to, to our hope section. And I hope yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> so is there anything else that you want to say before that you didn't cover? Did I tell you that I love dogs? <laughs> you did. <laughs> I know you love dogs. <laughs> yeah, okay. I want to tell a little story about our dog, okay? Because yeah. um, just how trusting oh, a yes, dog is. It is unbelievably, uh, he had yeah. amazing trusting eyes. And what was heartbreaking for me is when he got really old and it was time to have him put down, yeah. okay? Maybe I shouldn't tell this story, it's gonna to be too hard, okay? But, yeah. uh, but the dog had arthritis by that stage, and I thought, oh, poor dog, I've left it a bit long. Yeah. Okay, but I said, come on, come on, Zany, you've got to come yeah. up with me. And he didn't know what was going on. He just trusted that we were I going know. to do something he's so fun. trusting. <laughs> he was so trusting. And even though it put him in pain, uh, he just wanted to please us like he always has. Yeah. Okay. But that was a beautiful memory of him because he was such a trusting dog. And he, um, he just wanted to please us and mm. that's the amazing thing about dogs yeah all right yeah and we can learn a lot from them. That, that's that's <laughs> right and, and i suppose that's why i brought that up because the hope section is how we can use our knowledge of dogs and mm -hmm. our interaction of dogs mm -hmm. to be gentler with each other okay yes. so how can we all right so when we say when i say that humans are more complex than dogs yes. and there are more problems people go yeah if only anybody everybody else was like a dog and would trust me and obey me you know mm. then things would be right mm. okay mm. but because we are all free agents and yeah. because we are equals mm. as humans we are not here to obey each other okay so the uh the thing to learn is not to expect or want other people to be like dogs mm but to become more like a dog yourself, <laughs> all right? To be the loving dog, okay? <laughs> That's and, your aim in life, isn't it, Christian? <laughs> well, it Honestly. is. It is, it is, because, you know, a dog will wait eight hours, and when you walk home after work, yeah. he goes, oh, boy, 
Somebody's home to yeah, see me. Right. It's so yeah. nice to see you yeah. again. I've and missed you all day long. Shower you with love. Oh, they we do. could only shower other people with That's love. That's right. Yet when another human comes home, it's sort of like, hi, or yeah, I'll see you at dinner time. Okay. Yeah, or it's, or it's, it's, not even notice him if you're on the not computer. Even no, and no acknowledgement. But when anybody walks in the door, when anybody comes to visit, okay, yeah. drop what you're doing and <laughs> do what your dogs do. Go to the door and say, hey, there are some people here. And this jump, is all, really jump all nice. over them. And <laughs> That's right. Give them licks and kisses. <laughs> I mean, you can take it very far, Christian. Well, but but it's, the same, it's the same joy. It's, it's the, the joy. It's the joy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so this is, uh, okay, so it's just looking for a bit more spontaneity. Yeah. Just, just letting a bit more of your joy or your laughter come through. Yeah. It's uh, setting aside the tasks. Yeah. Okay. Every time you say, I'll be with you in a minute, just a sec, you're telling people that they are... Um, secondary to whatever you're doing and second best yeah and absolutely. second best and that they okay. come before your work or yeah that's yeah. right whereas a dog yeah. doesn't do that a cat does but we're not talking about cats okay but a dog <laughs> goes time. oh somebody's <laughs> arrived <laughs> hi here i am and and to, and to do that to drop whatever you're doing yeah. and just with joy say hi to somebody mm. and then we talked about how good dogs are at reading a mm. person mm. Yeah. take a moment to read somebody oh They've had a hard day. Yeah. Oh, she's in a good mood. This is mm. good. All right. But mm. just take time for the other person to read them. And then you shape your response around that person. Yeah. Uh, and as humans, what we can do is listen a lot mm. because mm. dogs listen. Yeah, they do. I mean, they don't understand, but they listen to mm. your feelings mm. and they listen to your words, even though they don't mm. understand. Mm. Mm. But if we actually listen to each other, listen to mm. our feelings, listen to our stories, listen to what needs to be said, mm. that all takes time, okay? Mm. Which means that any task or any movie that we're involved in or any game that we're playing, we'll have to just take a back seat. Yeah. And see, the nice thing is that dogs don't spend much time on the internet. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly. And they are. F I guess what I'd like to add to that is that they're fully present. They're yes. fully there for yes. you. You know, and and it's that eye contact too. That I just remember with my dog, just looking in his eyes, those beautiful hazel eyes. Yes. And just that love. I mean, that's what. I remember the most about him is those eyes and so giving that full attention to another person which yep. especially in our screen screen world that's screen world the screen right, world yeah. that screams at us or scream world yeah um to, to to put that aside and to give that full attention be completely so fully there in the moment that's something i actually teach my actors um that they to, to be there fully in the moment to be present and this presence is really something that we don't have as much now because we sort of, there's yeah. layers in life of, of virtual worlds that we're in. So yeah. there's not that presence, that full in the moment presence. Yes, that so, so that in the moment presence, uh, we call that mindfulness. Yeah. But mindfulness implies that you're being present for yourself so that your life goes better. Yeah. But being present in the moment with whoever is there, yeah. right, yeah. is being there in compassion, if you yeah, like, yeah. with the person. Yeah. And that's actually a very rewarding type of mindfulness because yeah. you get so much back from other people yeah. when you put yourself out there yeah. and keep yourself there as people. Fantastic. Okay. Do we have a challenge? A challenge is to be a bit more like a dog. What? Dig a hole <laughs> on the beach. Nick, <laughs> tell me there. <laughs> <laughs> with the people around you, take time to listen and read them. Mm. Greet them with joy. Just spend some time. Like, I'll, I'll just be lying at Caroline's feet while she does some <laughs> reading this evening. <laughs> That'll be interesting. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, to, to be the dog rather yeah. than demanding other people to be the dog. Because that will uh, increase trust mm. in all of us. And one of the best feelings that you can get is when you trust another person yeah. and that person trusts you. What do you mean demand another person to be a dog? Well, okay, our life would be easier if everybody else obeyed what we did. Oh, true. Trusted yeah. what we did and had yeah. no demands. Because yeah. remember, a, a dog doesn't make many demands on you. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. Uh, whereas we as humans, we always make demands on each other. Yeah. Even if it's you stay on your side of the road while we drive past, th th mm. that's a demand, okay? Mm, mm. Uh, don't hurt me. That's the, that's a demand. Yeah. Uh, and the closer you get, like in a friendship, 
uh, a friendship stays together because there's mutual benefit, yeah. right? Mm. So uh, sometimes mutual benefit can become a demand, yeah. all right? Yeah. Why weren't you there for me, mm. you know? Mm. Uh, and because we actually don't want to get it wrong, Mm -hmm. And we don't want conflict. We actually mm -hmm. want to be able to love each other. But because of that, people actually withdraw their love yeah. out of fear of not fear. getting it wrong. Getting it right. Of not getting it wrong. Of not getting it wrong. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, it's, it's a fear of getting it wrong. You fear of getting it, okay. And yeah. a fear of being hurt. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, because... Those, yeah. Yep. Those things do happen. It gets complex. It gets very, yeah. very complex. But learning for animals. That's your challenge, okay. Um, be more like a dog. <laughs> it's weak. That's right. Okay, so Caroline and I are in a strange situation at the moment because we find ourselves without a dog. Yeah. Uh, Caroline. Or a pet of any. Thought. Yeah, that's right. Caroline yeah. grew up with a dog. Yeah. I grew up with several dogs. And aside from my family, we had a few dogs as well. Uh, and <laughs> oh, that's not nice. It isn't, is it? No. It's not that nice. Was, that was a bad joke. Cut that one. Cut that one all right. <laughs> He's got a lovely family. And uh, for 15 years, we had, we had Zane, our, yeah. our dog. But at the moment, well, before COVID, we were planning to actually live in the United States. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and now we find ourselves yeah. in a transient sort of situation. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a bit difficult. But we will get back to the time when we are settled mm. and we both aim to have this old Labrador <laughs> that will sit on our front porch and wait for us to get home, play with the kids, dig a few holes in the yard, you know, rouse on it, but it'll be there just to enjoy life and share its limbic system with us. That's right. In the meantime, we borrow all the dogs on the beach and have lots of fun. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, I got to know a lovely dog last week. Yeah, yeah, beautiful yeah. dogs. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, great. All right, so we're going to finish off with a song, but before we have that uh, story song, um, a little bit of housekeeping as usual. <sighs> now, this is really interesting because um, everyone tells us at this stage that we should say, please put a, a thumbs up and, up. and, and um, subscribe <laughs> and do all of that. But, you know, I really feel uncomfortable every week saying that. So if you like it, you like it. If you don't... Um, you don't like it, okay? And so I'm not going, I'm gonna stop saying this. It's such a marketing thing. What I really would rather say is take care of yourselves, okay? Be more loving. Everyone's still going through a hard time. And um, yeah, we just wanna build up a community. If you, if you like to join our community, we'd love to have yeah. you and, and share this time with you. But yeah, please just take care of yourself, physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, all of those ways. That's better than saying this thumbs up thing. I would much prefer to do that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're here for preventative mental yeah, health. Yeah, we're here for that. Okay. So, and we've, yeah. we've talked about how dogs are good for preventative yeah. mental health, but at the moment we're spending some time basically saying that love is good for preventative mental yeah. health. And, and that's what we want everybody to experience. And if this is helpful to you, that's great. That's what yeah. we want. Yeah, yeah. And we would love to hear your, your dog stories. So if you have learnt anything um, from your dog, um, um, or past dogs, um, please write it in the chat because um, we'd love to get a, 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 a few of those back um, that we can read during the week if you're looking at the video afterwards. Um, and tell us a story about your dog. We'd love to hear that. Um, I've got this, uh, okay, someone says, going to check this out later tonight while I'm doing laundry. Okay, good. <laughs> That's good. So you do your laundry <laughs> while your dog's sort of sitting at your feet, you know. <laughs> or getting mud all over your laundry. Or... <laughs> As they do, but I guess that's they a do. really important part of dogs too. Dogs are messy. Yeah, but that's that's what life's messy. So again, something else yeah. and letting letting dogs be messy too. That's certainly something I've got to learn. Yeah. Yeah, so so much <laughs> to learn from dogs. Um, but we're so so glad that you could join us and we're going to have a song to sing you out with. Yes, yes, the song. So uh, I had a choice of uh, I love my dog, uh, puppy love, uh, uh, how much is that doggy in the window and all these songs that, well, they were quite trite, actually. Uh, they talked about how wonderful dogs are, but this dog song tells a story. Uh, this is written in a genre that combined, com uh, combines two very complex types of music. It combines the harmonies of country music with the melody of Western music <laughs> to come up with this complex genre called country and Western. <laughs> Country and Western singers seem to like old dogs because old dogs teach you a lot. Yeah. 
Country and Western music has a lot of sincere stories in so it. True. So this is yeah. a sincere story. I've taken this story song and I've I've changed it quite a bit so that it has a modern day ring to it. Uh, and you, you'll understand that. And uh, when I was putting this together, I called it um, Old Dogs, Children and Watermelon Wine. And Caroline said, oh, that's nice, but what was the original title? <laughs> so the original title of Tom T. Hall's hit country song was Old Dogs, Children and Watermelon Wine. <laughs> Enjoy. businesswoman in a bar somewhere in the Florida Keys quietly relaxing after work and sipping some strawberry daiquiris when this old gray-haired gentleman wandered into the place then pulled up a chair sat next to me and stared into my face old do you think I am, he said, sincere but charmless. I said, well, I really don't care, but I could tell that he was harmless. He said, I'm now 72, through wisdom rather than wealth. I turned away and thought, well, stranger, be wise and keep your hands to yourself. There wasn't anyone around except this old man and me. There's a guy who ran the bar watching some sports show on TV. And uninvited, this old man sat down and opened up his mind on old dogs and children and watermelon wine. Ever had a drink of watermelon wine? He asks flatly, lacking tact. He told me how it's light, sweet, and refreshing, but I didn't answer back. It's one of only three things in this world that's worth a solitary dime. That's old dogs and children and watermelon wine. He said, women only think about themselves and men are just no better. And friends, well, they're just not around when they discover you're down. He said, I've tried loving all people when I was young and in my prime, but now I'm down to old dogs, children, and watermelon wine. Old dogs, they care about you, even when you make mistakes. They're faithful, loyal, and true. There is nothing that they fake. I've had mutts and flea bags and hound dogs and yappers young and fine. Now I have an old dog, no children, and lots of watermelon wine. God bless all little children while they're still too young to hate. They grow up into adults and learn about love when it's too late. But puppies and pooches and bow wows and all types of canine, they grow into old dogs, innocent as children, 
and fresh as watermelon wine. When he finally walked away, I found a pen and copied down his line about being fake and loving too late and children being too innocent to hate. And that night I dreamed in peaceful sleep of shady summertime, of my good old dogs, my own children, and trying some watermelon wine. This has been Dr. Caroline Heim and Dr. Christian Heim for Late Night Love. We'll see you next week. And don't forget to pat a dog. Muff! <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha